Fundamentally, it takes a lot of work to go from components like this into a finished OEM product like this, which flies around in a gimbal, is put into a military system, a marine system, a security surveillance system, or an optical gas imaging system, for example. Hi, I'm Chris Johnston. I'm the president of Sierra Olympia Technologies and welcome to Ask an Expert. Infrared industry is fundamentally sensors and lenses and everything in between and around them that make them work in specific applications. There's a body of sensor vendors that'll hand you something like this and say our sensor is the best. And then there's a body of lens vendors that say my lens is the best. And how do you have or gain the knowledge to put these lenses and sensors together? When contemplating a strategy for an infrared camera, most commonly and the biggest issue you got to get over or need to consider from the beginning is it, is it a high performance cooled mid-wave application or is it an application for an uncooled long wave camera? Cooled mid-wave applications generally uh, apply to very high performance applications that have long range imaging. Uncooled microbolometers are great for when you have intermediate distance applications or short range applications or when you have strict size weight applications. So let's talk about a mid-wave system. A typical mid-wave system, you start with components like this on the sensor side and this on the land side. Critical here is the F number and back working distance. Do they match the design of the lens? That's a difficult thing to ascertain sometimes. It's not always clear. And small little deviations uh, sometimes really catch you down the line in image artifacts if they aren't matched up well. And you can see there's nothing mechanical between this sensor and this lens. These two things don't look like they should go together, but in fact, they do. That's what this system does. We have to build the fixtures and design the mechanics so that the light coming out of this last lens in the optical system reaches the input window and focuses on the sensor. And there's a lot of detailed mechanics that go into the design of a camera that makes a lens and a sensor work. So that's just the mechanical part. The electrical part, this is what the sensor vendor gives you. It gives you a cable and a document called an electrical interface document. And you have to design electronics that pick off these signals, massage the signals, correct the signals, so that it'll make an appropriate image. On top of that, you have to understand what's involved in the cooler controller. You've heard me say cooled mid-wave. This is a cooler. How does this cooler work? How does the cooler controller, this electronic board, understand what's going on inside the sensor. So there's an interface that we have to connect up there. All of these issues go into the earliest, most fundamental considerations of building a mid-wave camera. In the case of a long wave camera, this thing's very small and tiny. These cameras often come with a standard lens. Uh, those lenses are usually pretty simple. Sometimes, the lens could be improved upon. Sometimes a customer wants a zoom lens. So the interface of a sensor and a long wave uncooled sensor and a long wave zoom lens that's designed for this is a complicated process that involves temperature and mounting uh, considerations. We've been through all that. We've provided thousands of these kind of systems. Another element to building infrared cameras is test and measurement. Downstairs in our laboratories, we have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of specialized infrared testing equipment. Uh, 
understanding how to measure the resolution of an integrated system, measuring its modulation transfer function. That's a arcane test and measurement pr principle across all cameras, but it's especially difficult and it requires especially expensive infrared equipment uh, or specialized infrared test equipment to actually measure modulation transfer function, which is a measurement of resolution. Another key element of test and measurement is actual image quality. Uh, we can report noise, we can report MTF in cycles per milliradian. That's all the science stuff. What most people want to see is a good image. Another critical aspect of our, all of our process is to be able to turn on a camera, plug it into a computer, put it up on a screen, and our technicians have seen so many infrared images and so many faults and so many uh, different scenes in, in an infrared image that we have um, deep knowledge in what a quality infrared image should look like. Oftentimes, customers can't find something completely off the shelf that solves all their needs. And oftentimes, they don't have the resources to do the extra engineering that's necessary to get to the final product. And while the sensor vendor thinks their sensor is the best, the lens vendor thinks their lens is the best, um, we put it together to ensure with the lowest possible risk based upon our experience of dozens and dozens and dozens of camera designs that we've been through that the customer has the best chance of success at the end. And that's the value proposition of Sierra Olympia is, is integration success Con con deep consultation with customers to ensure that we're covering all the bases, that all the interfaces are right, that the, that the requirements are being met, and that ultimately the customer is successful or our customer's customer is successful. It's a long story to get from sensors to camera. My name's Chris, I'm with Sierra Olympia. I appreciate your time watching. Be sure to check us out on social and reach out at sierralympia.com. Happy to work with you. Thank you very much, bye.